I think the band did a great job today, and the singers, they did an awesome job. I appreciate them. We don't thank them enough. We really do. They did a great job today. And uh, if you get a chance to hug them sometime in the hallway or stuff, just tell them, hey, I just really was blessed by that. That, that encourages them, and that just keeps them coming and going. And I appreciate them so much for what God's doing in them and through them and in this church. Um, we're living in a time, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those um, psychological profile things where you can look at those, like the Rotus thing, and, and you can look at the picture, and some, sometimes you'll see this, and the psychologists ask you what you see, and I always see something weird. I try to tell them something weird so they'll never figure out what it is. And you find that, I've seen a picture of the, either you see the young lady or the old lady in that picture where you can kind of look at, or even the 5D pictures that you used to look at. Y'all remember standing in Cracker Barrel and looking at those 5D pictures, what they called them, because there'd be a picture hidden within the picture, and you'd have to sit there and cross your eyes and make your tongue flip to the side, and, and they'd say, if you just stare at it long enough, then that F-16 would jump out at you. Well, today, I think the problem we're running into in society is we have conflicting worldviews. What one person sees and what another person sees is totally opposite, and I don't get it. I'm living in a time, and I, and I come to you, um, let's just say I've got eyes that see things kind of like a, 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 when I call myself a prophetic eyes, I see things kind of black and white. It's one of those giftings you'll see in the, in, in the Word of God. I see things kind of black and white. It's just there, and I can't, I have a hard time somebody well, ask that question. It's kind of like that question in a Geico commercial. Does this dress make me look big? You know, you kind of go, and the older you get, the less filter you have. You know what I mean? And uh, you kind of go, you didn't want to hear what I had to say. Don't ask the question. You know what I mean? And so I find myself in this day and time, and, and the world is, is telling us about worldviews, and we look at the same picture, or we look at the same situation, and the, and the world will look at it a certain way, and we look at it a certain way. You hear more and more of the, the fake news that's out there, the, the, what somebody will report on, and, and, and be careful, because when you're looking across Facebook, there's a lot of things out there that's not real. I mean, I hate to tell you all that, but it's not real. Babylon B, you'll read a headline, and it'll be from Babylon B. They're satire. And they'll use stuff, and they'll go, and, it, and the headlines are just hilarious. When you start reading, you're going, that's what I always thought, and then you read it. And you're like, no, they're just joking. And so you find yourself in this day and time, where does truth lie? Where is everything that we call truth or what we examine as truth? Well, the world is telling us truth is this. The Scriptures tell us truth is this. And we all have these struggles of what is the real part, and what do you see in this picture, and perceptions, and worldviews, and stuff. Whatever the world says is true. I am weary of it. The world tells us that you can have two of the same gender and it can be just the same as having what God created of male and female. <clears throat> I do not doubt that two people can love a child. I don't doubt that a bit. I don't doubt that there's love in relationships. I don't doubt that a bit because there is love. But the worldview says that there's all the same. And I'm going, no, there's some truth that's got to be injected every time in every aspect of the worldview. Jesus is dealing with the Jews when he's talking to them in John the 8th chapter. Their worldview was, because I'm born Jewish, God is my father. And since God is my father, and he said, the truth is, we don't like you because you're speaking some things that do not fit our narrative or our worldview that we grew up in. There's a lot of things that we are handed as a child and things that were handed down to us that may can be come into question, but there are some things that are foundational truths that we can never leave. I remember preaching a series, it's been a while back on, and I had the compass up there, and I said that the compass will always point north. It always does. There's a truth that we'll have a, a different, we have perspectives on the Word of God, but the Word of God is going to be truth, and it's going to hold a standard no matter what we want to say about it. And I've argued with Christians about this, and I hate to say it, and they've bent the needle a little bit. And they're saying, no, see, we can bend this needle a little bit. We can live together before we get married. And it won't affect a thing. It does affect everything. You want, I, some of the worst problems that we have in counseling as ministers is when that happens and you can't figure out why communications are down. Because your communication line is there's some things that happen with that. We have to go through a process of reestablishing communication when those things happen. And you'll find you'll struggle with some communication that can be overcome. Those are the things that happen. But you find yourself, the world says, there's no problem with this. 
that this is all the way the, the, it should be. It's normal. And ladies, y'all love it. It's like the, you know, when the guy says, hey, you know, we've got to live. It's like trying out a used car before you drive it. You know, it's like it's a wonderful way to put things. That's a dumb way of the world. When Jesus is looking at the Jews and he's telling us, saying, look, you're missing it. I am truth. When he tells us in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, the life. There's no man comes unto the Father except through me. This was totally offensive to them. They wanted nothing to do with it. It said they had the way. They understood this. And now here's this person that they see as a fully human being standing there telling them, saying, you're missing the boat. Now, we all like seeing Jesus as that little, with that little fluffy sheep in his arm and never confronting anybody. I'm telling you, this was a confrontation. This was truth being manifest to those who are believing a lie. The reason I bring this up because we're living in a time that I wonder if we are going to be bold enough to bring truth when the world is believing a lie. I mean, the world is going, hey, this is the way it's got to be. This is the way it's going to be. Hollywood sells us a bill of goods in movies. And don't you love it how Hollywood, they'll do shoot 'em ups And they do them. I mean, they're graphic. I, I, I've seen things that I don't talk about here in, in the crime scenes and stuff. And, and, and Hollywood gets a lot of it right. I have a hard time watching the movies because I've seen the real thing. And I'm kind of going, they get it right in the way, the gruesomeness. And then they come out next week and say, we need gun control and we don't want anybody. And I was like, wait a minute. You're selling me this for $7 every time I rent a movie. And then you tell me not to do this. You're proclaiming this but doing something else. And that's why Jesus had a problem with the Jews and said, this is what you're saying, but this is what you're doing. You're having a problem here. And you know what truth does? It always lands right in the middle of conflict, and it proclaims. It does not ever accommodate. Truth will, does not accommodate. And that's one of the hardest things. Now, we as human beings, and I've found over the years, and it's hard, because that prophetic eyes that I have, somebody asks you a question, I, I do well, and I got scars on my tongue, I do well to bite my tongue first. I got to figure out what, what's the real question here. What are they asking, you know? And I do well when I do that. When I don't do well is when I just kind of go, blah, 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 blah. And they're going, I hurt my feelings. And I'm going, ooh, you asked the question, though. You know, and as a pastor, I'm trying to get a little more wise. Here's Jesus. When he's looking at these Jews, Jews he's saying, look, you don't even have the right father. You're telling me I didn't come from the father? You haven't got the right father. And I love it because this isn't fluffy Jesus sitting here with the, you know, the manicured hair and manicured nails. And, and he's got that little sheep in his arms. And he's saying, you know what, guys? Y'all just don't have it right. Metro Jesus is not this. Understand? Jesus is looking at these Jewish people. And he's saying, look, your father is the devil. Boy, that's, some, that's a bingy between the eyes. Truth. Now, a lot of times we, and, and Jesus proclaimed truth everywhere. Now, look at this. Another scenario, the Samaritan woman at the well. Look how he handled truth, and he spoke truth because he is the truth, and he dealt out truth. He dispensed truth because truth is always a dosage of things, and you think the stuff you're taking, the medicines that doctors give you, if you ever read the stuff that is going to happen to you when you take this stuff, you will never take this stuff. You know, it's a fine print. If you take this, then you can have this, 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 this. And this could happen, and there's a possibility that this could happen, this could happen, and you're going. But it can help you on this one thing. You're kind of going, woo-wee. You know, and when Jesus was dosing out the truth, he would look at the situation and look at that, and he looked at the Jews, he's saying, look, your father is the devil. Woo! Between the eyes. He didn't back up. And you think, well, in this day and time in which we're living, where you have fake news, you have things going on. Yeah, I, I mean, I listen to the politicians in, in Washington. We can see the same thing, and I'm going, you know what this is. And they're telling me it's something totally different than what it is. And I hate to pick on Maxine Waters, but she's one of the funniest ones to pick on. She tells me how she's going to help the poor, but she's living in a $4.3 million mansion. There's something wrong with that picture, and she don't even live in her district. Because that's too poor. I'm going, there's something wrong with this picture. That's the world the way. Hey, it's okay if I do it. But let me tell you how you do it. You know? I guarantee you, and this is something I saw, and I read this this past week. You want to fix the health care thing? Make every one of the senators and representatives come under this health care. It'll get fixed in a week. Because truth is going to be truth, folks. 
And we look at it and we say, okay, here's this worldview. This is what it is. And politicians will tell you, this is what this is. And you're kind of going, ah, last time I looked, that's not what it is. That don't look right. And here's the Jews telling Jesus said, you're just a human being. This doesn't make sense saying you came from the Father. That doesn't make a bit of sense to us. And you know what? What we've had going all these years, it looks good. And all you're trying to do is upset our little apple cart. And Jesus kind of looks at him and says, you know what? If you'll know the truth, you'll be set free. And they start arguing with him and saying, we're not slaves. And Jesus was talking about you're a slave to sin. All these rules and regulations, all these things that you've placed out, and, say, and you put burdens on people's backs, and you say, if you'll follow these rules this way and that how, and they weren't even doing it. They weren't. But they put all, I, did that sound like Washington. Here's another rule. We're not going to do it. We exempt ourselves, the Jewish people. We're not going to do this. We're going to exempt ourselves. But this is the way you got to live to be pleasing to the Father. And Jesus just telling them, saying, you got the wrong Father. Your address is the wrong place. And they started arguing with Jesus and the point of saying, he said, you've been trying to kill me ever since I came out and started saying, I am who I am. He said, you've been trying to kill me. And that the fact of the matter is, whenever truth is interjected into a situation, especially when we start looking at the world, it is so contaminated. And you can go back to the Garden of Eden, and you can see where it was the subtlety of the lies that were interjected in that caused mankind to look at this and start doubting the truth of God. It started all like then. Satan comes in with the subtlety of lies and said, you know, did God really say this? You want to see what it looks like to serve? You ever watched? Uh, um, oh, I hate it when I do that. Bare necessities, Jungle Book, the snake on that one. That's that's the serpent. You know, you, know, you ever want to watch that? You can look at Garden of Eden in that. You know, I go back to cartoons to figure out life. And uh, <laughs> some people say I am a cartoon, but so what? You know, it's fun. You know, like I told, uh, you know, it, it is one of those things that we look back in the Garden of Eden, you see all the lies that have been woven over the years, and, and it's still working today. We look at our society and the mess that it's in, it's because it is contaminated with such lies. And when we reject the truth, it, one of the things that happens is when you reject truth, it will, uh, nature abhors a void. The last time you pulled up those weeds in your yard, what happened when you didn't do anything about it? More weeds grow there. What happens is that when we rejected the truth in the garden, we just keep recycling the lies, and it just keeps coming. And here's Jesus looking at these, these Jewish people, and he's saying, look at me. He says, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. He said, I know you're Abraham's descendants, yet you want to kill me because you have no room for my word. And have no room for the truth because the truth will always confront us. It always confronts us. I have the propensity as a sinner to go towards the lie. I, I struggle. I can tell you this as a pastor. There's some people I love deeply. And they're walking in some darkness. And, and as a pastor, I want to go and, you know, do the, the Hollywood thing. Kick the door in and go, hey! You know, and it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes when somebody asks you a question, you can lay the truth out there. And they're, they're ready for it. I remember one guy. He told me he was he and his girlfriend. And he couldn't figure out why the family didn't respect him and that and the other. Well, they were living together. And I told him this the simple truth. I said, if you'll move out, you go apologize to the grandfather that you've been, you know, with the granddaughter. Because that's who raised the granddaughter. I said, you move out, go apologize to the grandfather and watch how things change. Next day, boom, he's out. Talks to the grandfather and he said, boy, things just changed. You know, a truth that is applied can transform the world. And all Jesus was telling us, saying, if you will make room in your heart for my truth, it will set you free. Jews didn't believe it when they were sitting there talking to Jesus, and Jesus having to argue with them. He said, we are not illegitimate, they protested. In this day and time, people are saying, and I have to argue with Christians on this one too, because my liberal brothers, because I can love a liberal person. Yeah, I can. And I do. I do. I do love liberal people. There's some folks that are in my life that I, I love them. I disagree. I mean, we will sit and talk and we disagree theologically, and there's just there's no way because they can say, well, you've got to accept this lifestyle. And I'm going, Jesus is not accepting it. It ain't, it ain't going. It ain't, it ain't going to be a part of heaven. There's not going to be that street that you can walk down that's, that's like New Orleans. You know, it ain't. I'm telling you. And no matter what we think, it ain't going to be like that. There's not going to be an exceptional street that somebody says, okay, I, this, this street's for the gossips. They just couldn't get quite to get a hold on it here. 
You know, and so they get to spend the first thousand years of eternity working the gossip out. No, 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 that ain't going. And he said lying is not going to be there. So we find ourselves in a predicament in this day and time in which we live because the world is setting an agenda that has been contaminated by lies and they're saying this is the way it's going to be and Jesus is looking at it and saying I'm the way, the truth, and the life that no man comes unto the Father except through me and all the world's trying to come up with a different way. They're just trying to experience say okay, let's just, um, you can have this alternate thing. You can do this way and it won't hurt a thing. I'll tell you folks, anytime we try to cross with truth, We'll either be cut by it or we can go in with it and say, God, do what you got to do, the surgery on my heart, so I'll stop believing these lies. There's nothing worse. One of the hardest things we do in counseling is try to get somebody to over the lies. It can be the lies getting somebody to worry. Oh, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Look, it hadn't happened. It ain't going to happen. Don't quit lying. Stop listening to the lies. Satan comes as a master of illusion. I don't know about you, but I watch these uh, illusionists. And I always try to figure out how they do that. How they do that? How in the world did he get out of that little tank that's about to drown him and, and all this? And it's all an illusion. You know, Seth was getting into card tricks there for a little while, and he was doing card tricks. I remember he did one to my, my brother-in-law and said, Hey, man, what's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> it was an illusion and stuff. He's ah, oh, man, I don't know how you do that. And, and so you find yourself, and he, that's all Satan is. He's a master of illusion. He's saying, hey, it's going to be okay. That's what he told the Jewish people. It's okay. You've been like this for years. This is the way it's going. This is just the way it should be. There's a lot of people today who would say, theologically, we need to reinterpret the Scriptures, and we need to go ahead and do it this way because this just seems natural for our day. And Jesus is looking at the Jews, and he's saying, look, you're missing the boat. Everybody that's following you is following your father, the devil. That's strong. That's truth. And that permeates our heart. That just penetrates. And they hated him so much. You know what they did? Strung him up on a cross. Uh, isn't that funny? No, it's not. We don't want to get into that situation. We don't want to get to where we say, hey, you know, I, I speak truth and it could cost me something. Yes, it can cost you something. You know, the truth of the matter is it may even cost you a relationship or two when you start talking to somebody and you say, look, I, I don't really, I, I, I can't go this route. I've had people do that to me as a pastor. They say, uh, don't you this thing? I was like, mm, mm, no, 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 no. It's not going to work. Because there is a standard of what God says, and it's a standard, and that's what Jesus said. He says, I'm it. I am the Son of God. Jewish people looked at him and said, no, you're just kind of crazy, and we just don't like you, and I think we'll just get rid of you. But here's where Jesus always deals. He confronts the Jews with the truth. He is the truth. Jesus always confronted the lies of his day with truth. The lie of the Samaritan woman that she was okay. And, and the husband she was with right now was the man she was living with at that point was her husband. And Jesus looked at her and said, you know what? I'm telling you, just my prophetic eyes looking, it, you're still wrong. You've tried it many ways. Now try it my way. He had a different delivery of the truth, but it was still truth. He didn't just say, hey, you're going to be okay. Just go ahead. It's just an alternate lifestyle you're living don't worry about it. God is love. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Yeah, God is love. But I'll tell you something. Until you've got a good dose of God's judgment, you understand that he is going to judge sin. He's going to, and I, I don't want to be just a fundamentalist up here beating my Bible saying, oh, you've got to get out of sin and go. But you know what? Truth will always get us to the point and say, you've got to deal with the sin of your life. And if you don't want to deal with the sin of your life, and the Jews didn't want to deal with the sin of their life, you reject truth. You always will. There's nothing better than trying to accommodate truth to your lifestyle, whatever it is. And we as Christians understand this. Before I go out here and go on, hey, you got, and I do preach against certain things. I do preach and say they've got to get out of these lifestyles. But I'll tell you this. I know the destruction. And my heart compassion is the destruction that happens. I will not let the one in high school that's experimenting with drugs and just say, hey, it's just a part of life. Just, there's so many of them that haven't made it through that stage. Somebody's got to interject some truth. Say, that can kill you. The alcoholic that just kind of sits there and says, I can handle this. No, you can't. The prostitute that says, hey, I, I, just, I just need a little extra money. I'm, not, I'm just doing it for that. That's it. That's a lie. Somebody's fed her. 
It may be a truth to her. Or take the guy that says, hey, you know, it's no big deal to have the affair. That's a lie. It will affect everything about you. It does. And Jesus is trying to permeate the Jewish people. He's trying to tell them, he's saying, look, here's what you've got to understand. If you're not listening to the Father, you're listening to the devil. He goes on to tell them in 42, he says, if God were your Father, you would love me. I came from God, and now I'm here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me here. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. You carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning and not holding to the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can, I, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Pretty strong. I had another illustration, but I can't use it. I run out of time. Pretty strong. Here's one thing I want you to hear from this today. There's a standard you'll find in Scripture that is truth. Now, Hollywood would tell us this is all changing. Politicians will tell you that it really doesn't matter. Now, what scares me, and, I, and here's the honest and goodness truth that I can give you. When it says, liars will not get into heaven. That's a scriptural reference I can give you. That bothers me. Because I know people that lie on a regular basis, and we elect them to office, and then follow them. Not all of them, but I know there's some that just sit up there, and they, they say, no, that, that's a water right there. When you know, it ain't water. And you're going, what's wrong with you? Why can't people say what they mean and mean what they say anymore? I don't understand that. But I found that in Scripture, that what I start looking at, and I'm saying, God, this is not going to change. This is a standard that he's going to hold. And the Common Presbyterian Church, we believe that it is male, female, that make up a family. We have not changed that. We're not going to change it, as long as I'm a Common Presbyterian. And what I have found is that there's a standard that is the truth. You as a Christian, and me as a Christian, we need to recognize that standard. There's certain things that are not going to change. Now, application of this truth but this truth is not going to change. I have found that, that is a standard, and this is what I want to encourage you. In this day and time where everything is shifting, everything changes overnight, you've got, to, you've got to get into the Word and figure out Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You've got to figure out where Jesus is standing on this. I had a girl, I remember, we went to college with, and, and she got so liberated because she stopped believing the Bible, and she felt like we'd put so much on her that she had to believe what we said. As a, we kind of discipled her. And she, remember, she came back and she wrote a letter and she says, I've been so liberated. And what she was telling me, I've been so liberated from the truths that y'all were showing me in Scripture. And now she believes whatever. I'm kind of like, wow, that's a marshland you're going to get out of. It's a shame. But there's a standard that's not going to change. And that's why it's all, it is frustrating. I can tell you as a pastor at times because I'll sit there and people come to me and say, here's what we're doing this way. And I was like, I, I love you. But here's the standard. It's not going to change. And you say, well, that was my parents' standard. That's what they were. Listen to me. When they violated the standard when they were a kid, I can take, I, I, I remember one particular family. I could not figure out what was going on until I started listening to their story. And I can take you back to when they were teenagers, some things they did, some missteps that trailed all through their life. And you think, well, can't God forgive your sins? Yeah, he can, if you recognize them as that. A lot of times we just kind of cover over potholes and we wonder why that pothole keeps coming back. One of the things that I have found is that standard's not going to change. The next thing is, as we as Christians, we have to live the truth. There is a the truth, not just, it's a truth, the truth. It is it, that's Jesus. When we find those standards, and then that is what's so important, and one of the things the world gets confused at is as we as Christians, and, and it goes from us from the top to the bottom, is those are the preachers. And, they, and you look at all the preachers that have fallen from the grace of God, and God has given them grace to overcome their sins and stuff, but they fall in, and the world looks at it and go, okay, you're preaching a standard, but then you're not living a standard. And Jesus is looking at the Jews, and you know why he called them a liar? It's because they were preaching a standard, but they were not living a standard. There's a difference. We as Christians, it is so critical, critical this day and time. We've got to live the standard. And you know what? There are going to be some times, and, and this is the, the thing that I'm grateful about. 
we're not going to hit 100%. I know that. There are going to be some times you're going to have a stinking attitude, and that's not a good standard to have. There are going to be some times that you're going to just miss it. But God is the God of all mercy and grace. He wants you to come back, not to lower the standard to where you are, but to lift you up to where you're supposed to be in the forgiveness of sins. And the last thing I'll tell you, and this is one I think that we're failing at times. We've got to recognize the standard. The second, we've got to live the standard. And the third, we've got to preach the standard. We've got to preach it. We've got to proclaim it. Now, how you do that is out of your personality. I'm not asking you to do it like I do things. Out of your personality. There's some of you more straightforward. Some of you, you can talk things and you can get things in where I would never would to somebody present the truth but the truth of the matter is we've all got to present the truth that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven alternate things of this day and time in which we live yes we got to make a standard to say look this is not right and there will be some, and, and some of you you may be so nice that's why God makes us different personalities you know I mean some of you are so nice when I've done something wrong you tell me and I'm like wow that's so nice but you find yourself in this day in which we live to live the truth means that we're going to represent our Father. Because he's telling the Jewish people, he said, look, you look like your Father. <laughs> You're trying to kill me because you don't want the truth. Anytime the truth is presented and it's going to be rejected, then either we're going to change it, make it for our day, or we accept it. You either accept or reject. There's no other ways about it. Maybe there is an adapt, but you accept or reject, but adapting is rejecting. You can adapt the truth to whatever you're in. You kind of go, hmm, I think this is what truth is. No, God's not interested in that. There's right, there's wrong. There are times that we can look at the application of the truth and go, I mean, I can apply this. This is real. This is what I want. And, and the standard of the truth is there. We, then we have to practice as Christians to be believable. And the third one, we've got to proclaim it till he comes. We're going to close the service out, and I'm going to ask you if if you would, just think about those in your peripheral vision of your life who's walking in a lie. Don't do it like I would do it. I got God put somebody heavy on my heart this morning. Don't do it like I would do it, you know. But you've got to present truth. First and foremost, if they do not know Jesus Christ, you've got to present Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Second, if they're walking in error and they have some issues that are going on, it's not yours to theologically debate them, but it is yours to present to them that you love them so much that you want the best for them. That's what we claim. You know, Jesus, in doing this to the Jewish people, they were confronted with truth. They were confronted with the truth of who Jesus was and is. They had to make a decision. They said, no, crucify him. Not all of them, but a good bit. I want to ask you if we'll stand today and let's commit ourselves to walking in his truth in this day because it's going to get tougher. There are going to be some times that people are going to look at you and go, mm -mm. I've, I've confronted parents who think it's wise to do beer parties for underage people so they can teach them how to be responsible. I'm kind of going, here's the truth you need to hear. <laughs> number one, you can be arrested. Number two, that's dumb. In this day and time, it's not about just the confronting of truth of the world. It is about us living in the light and letting people understand Jesus Christ is the only way. And it's going to affect every aspect of life. Let's stand together. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon our lives. Lord, you spoke pretty hard truth to the Jewish people that day that their father was not the heavenly father, but their father was the father of the devil. They were believing the lies. They're living in a time where this world is going down a path, and we, have, we see people all around us that are not listening to the truth of the Word of God. So, Father, I pray that you'll convict our hearts to live it, to understand, to recognize what the standard of truth is, to then live it, Father, then proclaim it, that Jesus Christ is the only way and that we need to repent 
in order to know him. Father, you are an awesome God. You're a holy God. One that is merciful, but yet one that has judgment also. And Lord, what we excuse a lot of times, you're judging and saying, no, that cannot be excused. And so, Father, if we love people deeply, because even you speaking to the Jewish people, you are loving them and telling them the truth. I ask you, Lord, that you would just show us those things in us. Will we proclaim your truth no matter what? Thank you for that, Father. We're going to sing, I surrender all. If you have a prayer need at this point, I know we've prayed for those who have been sick, but if you have somebody maybe that's on your heart that I've got to speak to them and tell them about Jesus, I invite you to come and pray. Oh, to Jesus I, I surrender all, to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. I surrender humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I I'll come up here and give Shep a hug for her birthday. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon Shep. Thank you for her birthday, and thank you, Lord God, for another year. And I pray for your blessings. Keep her healthy, whole, and mentally sound. And we thank you, Father, for your blessings upon her on her birthday. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to make her stand right here. Y'all come give her a blessing of a birthday hug.